Starship Flight 11 was a spectacular mission, demonstrating a stable ascent, precise stage separation, booster splashdown, successful payload deployment, clean in-space relight, fault-free coasting, controlled re-entry, and a safe splashdown. SpaceX has now released striking footage of Ship 38's descent and splashdown in the Indian Ocean, revealing new insights into how the vehicle endured extreme re-entry heating, structural stresses, and material erosion. By analyzing this footage frame by frame, we can identify every visible damage mode and explore its engineering implications. As Ship 38 descended toward the ocean, many of its heat shield tiles appeared heavily charred, surfaces blackened, micro cracks visible, and burn patterns evident. However, it's important to remember that before Flight 11, SpaceX intentionally omitted tiles in specific regions, most notably in a four-tile cluster, to evaluate how the vehicle handles tile loss or damage under actual re-entry loads during future operational missions. In such areas, visible damage is not necessarily a failure, but rather a deliberate stress test designed to measure safety margins. This mission also featured a high angle of attack entry, intentionally chosen to amplify aerodynamic heating and structural loads, thereby stress testing the thermal protection system to its limits. In Flight 10, observers noted orange discoloration on the ship's windward side, attributed to oxidation of metallic tiles under re-entry conditions. Those tiles had been installed to study whether metallic materials could replace ceramic tiles in future designs. While metallic tiles were not used on Flight 11, brownish-orange staining still appeared. The most likely source is oxidation of the stainless steel tile retention pins, which were directly exposed to plasma heating in regions where tiles were intentionally omitted. Stainless steel primarily contains iron, chromium, and nickel. When exposed to high-temperature oxidizing conditions, the iron component forms oxides that exhibit reddish or brownish hues. Furthermore, certain regions had tiles removed entirely, exposing bare stainless steel to study how the primary structure responds to re-entry heating without any thermal protection layers. The direct plasma exposure could also have formed oxide layers on the steel itself, contributing to the discoloration observed. White streaks were also visible across windward surfaces, similar to those seen during Flight 10. These originated from cow wool blankets, high-purity alumina silica ceramic fiber mats used beneath the tiles as secondary insulation. When subjected to intense heating and plasma flow, these fibers can degrade, releasing fine alumina or silica particles that deposit along the airflow path as white streaks. In the nose cone region, particularly where tiles were intentionally omitted, the footage shows a thin, persistent flame. Beneath this area lie the header tank propellant fill and drain lines. If that unprotected hull section experienced excessive thermal stress or localized rupture, the feed lines may have been compromised, allowing oxidizer or fuel to leak. Under re-entry conditions, such leakage could ignite momentarily in the surrounding plasma flow. While not definitively confirmed, the observed anomaly aligns with the thermal and structural environment in that zone. The aft flaps were among the most severely damaged components, exhibiting missing tiles, peeling stainless steel, warping, and edge erosion. During the dynamic banking maneuver, when the ship rolled laterally to shift its lift vector, increase drag, and bleed off velocity, these flaps endured extreme aerodynamic, thermal, and structural loads. This stress was amplified by the high angle of attack entry, which increased heating intensity and thermal gradients across the vehicle. The combination of flexural stress, torsion, and rapid thermal cycling placed heavy strain on these control surfaces. Exposed edges and gaps allowed plasma jetting, accelerating erosion and metal peeling. In contrast, the forward flaps, redesigned and repositioned more leeward and further forward in the Block 2 configuration for improved aerodynamics, experienced reduced loads and benefited from better shielding geometry, explaining their relatively minor damage. One of the most notable findings from the footage is the presence of visible leaks on both the oxygen and methane tanks. Erosion of the thermal protection system and micro-cracking of the stainless steel could have caused thinning and perforation of the tank walls, resulting in small but continuous gas leaks during re-entry. However, an explosion did not occur because the leaks were clearly separated. The escaping methane and oxygen never mixed in the right proportions to ignite. Additionally, the hypersonic airflow rapidly dispersed both gases, preventing any sustained combustion or flame formation. Fortunately, the mission remained stable through descent, underscoring the delicate balance between thermal protection and structural integrity in Starship's upper stage architecture. Despite the visible damage, these observations should not be mistaken for mission failures. 
In many respects, they represent intentional stress tests. SpaceX deliberately omitted heat shield tiles in specific regions to expose the structure to extreme conditions, provoke edge effects, and identify weak points. Every scorch mark, discoloration, and microleak is valuable data, a controlled failure that reveals real-world stress margins. This strategy provides SpaceX with empirical insights to refine tile bonding techniques, adhesives, mechanical retention systems, and pin designs. It also contributes to enhancing secondary insulation and ablative layers capable of withstanding re-entry heating even when tiles are lost. The broader objective is to strengthen the primary structure to resist deformation, microcracking, and thermal fatigue, while improving thermal gradient management to minimize abrupt temperature-driven stresses. In parallel, SpaceX aims to introduce greater redundancies and safety margins around critical zones such as feed lines, propellant tanks, and structural transition areas. With the vast data gathered from these test flights, SpaceX is steadily advancing the Starship architecture, pushing the Block 3 design toward true reliability and reusability, with reduced structural damage, fewer tile losses, safer re-entry margins, and a definitive path toward consistent tower catches. Responding to a post on X that highlighted how every Starship that began a controlled re-entry has survived intact. Even with tiles intentionally removed in several regions, Musk emphasized that stainless steel has proven to be the right material choice for Starship's structure. It can withstand extreme thermal and mechanical stress, even when tiles fail or detach. He added that while significant progress has been made on the heat shield design, the tile system and its mounting architecture will still require many more flights to perfect. Flight 11 closed the chapter on Block 2 prototypes and opened the path for the operational Block 3 era, starting with Flight 12, where full reusability and orbital recovery become the focus. The vehicles in line for Flight 12 are Ship 39 and Booster 18, both at different stages of assembly at the production site. After finishing the heat tile installation, Ship 39's nose cone and payload bay section were moved into Mega Bay 2 to begin stacking with its tank sections. The Block 3 nose cone features several upgrades over Block 2, most notably in-space propellant transfer docking hardware. These adapters allow two ships to dock in orbit and enable safe, controlled transfer of propellant from a tanker to the ship destined for the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Even though no in-space refueling is planned with Ship 39, these docking ports act as prototypes to gather data on how they endure launch, flight, and re-entry stresses. The nose cone also carries upgraded catch pins, intended to assist the ship's future landing on tower arms. Similar pins were installed on ships in flights 10 and 11 to stress test their behavior under intense re-entry heat and structural loads. Meanwhile, Booster 18 is being assembled in Mega Bay 1. Its lower liquid oxygen tank section is already complete, and work has progressed to stacking the methane tank. The forward dome of the methane tank, now featuring an integrated hot stage ring, was moved into place early Tuesday morning. This new integrated hot stage ring marks a major step toward making the booster truly fully reusable. Until now, the hot stage ring was jettisoned after stage separation, requiring SpaceX to install a new one before every flight, a process that limited turnaround efficiency. With the ring now integrated into the booster, the entire structure remains intact for reuse. However, this change also means that the booster's forward dome must now endure the intense heat and mechanical stress generated by Starship's six Raptor engines during hot staging. To handle these extreme conditions, SpaceX has reinforced the forward dome, significantly increasing its structural strength and thermal resilience. This reinforcement allows the dome to better withstand the exhaust plume and vibrational loads from Starship's upper stage engines, bringing Super Heavy one step closer to rapid reusability. Once that forward ring was in place, the remaining methane tank ring sections began moving into Mega Bay 2 for integration. If assembly continues at this pace, both Ship 39 and Booster 18 could be fully stacked, pass ground testing, and be ready for Flight 12 by early next year. However, vehicle readiness is just one side of the equation. The bigger hurdle is launch infrastructure. Flight 12 will not launch from Pad 1's orbital launch mount, which is incompatible with Block 3 designs. Therefore, the existing OLM at Pad 1 is being demolished and rebuilt to match Pad 2's upgraded configuration. Preparatory work has now begun at Pad 1 ahead of OLM demolition and pad upgrades. Teams purged all pad infrastructure with liquid nitrogen to safely clear the propellant lines and systems of any residual fuels.
This ensures a safe environment for workers to begin dismantling the OLM and removing tower components that need to be replaced to accommodate Block 3 vehicles. Additionally, the carbon dioxide storage tanks and the deluge system's water tanks were emptied following Flight 11 to facilitate the upgrade work. Once the reconstruction and upgrades are complete, Pad 1 will resume supporting Starship launches and tower catch operations. In the meantime, Pad 2 will continue to handle all Starship flights. Progress at Pad 2 has been steady. One key milestone was installing the main propellant delivery hoses, connecting the booster quick disconnect mechanism to the methane and oxygen pipelines from the storage tanks. These large flexible hoses will soon undergo extension and retraction tests to verify smooth BQD system operation. Once testing is complete, the remaining panels of the BQD hoods will be installed, marking near completion of both propellant interface systems. Shielding now covers nearly the entire gantry, protecting high-pressure lines, cryogenic plumbing, hydraulic systems, and electrical circuits interfacing with the OLM. The Flame Trench Deluge System has completed several test rounds over the past month, with engineers gradually increasing flow, pressure, and duration. These stepwise tests verify every component, from pumps and pressurization units to drains and outlet manifolds, operates as intended. Future tests will ramp up to full capacity, culminating in a complete pad flooding trial that will activate both the flame diverter and launch mount water systems simultaneously, essential for protecting the rocket and pad from intense thermal and acoustic loads during liftoff. Another major upgrade involves the chopstick stabilizers, the mechanical arms that connect with ships and boosters before lifting and stacking operations to prevent swaying from wind and vibrations and ensure precise alignment. Pad 2 stabilizer arms have undergone multiple motion tests recently, during which the stabilizers, locking pins, and chopsticks were tested together in synchronized sequences, confirming cohesive operation. The final major component awaiting installation is the ship quick disconnect arm, currently at the Sanchez site. Crews have begun installing hinges and support structures on the launch tower in preparation. The arm is designed to support the ship QD system, providing propellant and power connections to the Starship upper stage. If progress continues at the current pace, Pad 2 should be fully operational by year's end, ready for the first Block 3 Starship flights, starting with Flight 12. Altogether, SpaceX's Starship program is moving fast, with many exciting developments ahead. I'll be covering these future missions and progress in upcoming videos, so please subscribe to stay updated. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comments.